Right then, this is the last part of the trip to Cornwall in 2007 where I'm going to St Ewan, the last church that I deal before heading back to Somerset. Um, all this Cornish visit was about finding Zara's ancestors, doing scans, looking around villages, finding little bits of information here and there. I did a similar thing in Devon for her Devonshire ancestors as well. So here we go then, we're back on the last leg really, but it's, it's quite a long leg this one. It will be divided up again because there's so much of it. <clears throat> here we go. Right, it's the 5th of October. I've been up since 7 o'clock or 6, getting the van prepared to return to Somerset. <coughs> and I'm making the flask of hot water. Ready to go. I'm going to go to that St. Mew's village before I head on. Yeah, I'm in my lovely VW camper van. Um, you know, it's just got the bed, it's got the cooker, it's got the little toilet, it's everything. It's my little home and I really love it. And that was in 2007. I only had it to 2008. And I'm... Um, in 2014, I'm, I'm hoping to get myself another one and I'm going on another tour around the country. So anyway, back to the tape. That's the plan. I think I might have forgotten the tapes on. I, I've put it on. I'm getting ready for the return journey. Right, disaster has struck. I was going to St Mew's. I got there now to the church, but I went up a wrong road like you do. And it was one of those things I was dreading. It was um, a very, very narrow path. Anyway, I'd gone quite a way along it, and guess what comes along? A bloody great tractor with a great big load on the back. So there's me, I have to try and reverse down. And it's, it took about, what it seemed to take for ages, but in the end I had to let the farmer do it. And it was so tight and bendy, I was going into the hedges and then the worst part of it all is the leak of the oil. That's the worst bit, so whether I'll get home or not is a completely another thing today. Um, the engine might completely seal up, pack up. I don't know, it's going all right at the moment. It's got me to the final viewing. Right, I'll speak to you in a minute. I'm going to go in the graveyard and take some pictures. Right, I'm at St. Ewan. As you come in, there's a big, large stone. I don't know what it's about. You've got a memorial cross. Just see if there's any names on there that's of interest. There's a Tremaine on there. W Tremaine. No Barberies, no Pierces. I'm walking up to the church now. It's quite a basic grey church with a stubby tower. go clockwise as usual. The church, by the front of the church there's Jacob Oliver. He died in 1899 and that's um, the most obvious one and then there's a big table, table one <coughs> to Mary. 
Mary. Looks like Vivian. Don't know what her last name is, or it could be V I A N N. It's a big table one. Yeah, Vivian. There's a few of them. There's a strong man. John Christopher Grace. He died. Born at Eton the 31st of July 1926. Died in Iraq, returning from Singapore, 18th of August 1954. You've got some quite old ones in there. Yeah. There's one here, 1797. Somebody was 37. This looks like Jane, J-A-I-N, Grohl, Grohlman or Groffman. He was 37. And there's one 1782, aged 24. It's Mary Groffman, daughter of Ja and Anne Groffham. And there's another one. Oh, I don't know. That's pretty old as well. Some quite old ones in there. 1800, somebody was... Could be 71. Could be 7. Thomas William. And there's another one, 1793, age 90. Thomas Williams. Parnells, Crossmans. Yeah, there's pretty old ones in here. Jane, the wife of Henry Nichols, who died aged 36 in 1793. So those are the old ones. Then we've got a picture of a, I don't know what it is, maybe it's a church hall or something like that. Yeah, I just think it's a church hall. There's even toilets here. That's good, isn't it? I'm looking for barberries, of course. There's a bench in memory of Geoffrey Hancock. It's quite a big graveyard. I'm going to get my feet wet, aren't I? Yes, it's a big graveyard. It's bigger than what I thought it was going to be. <coughs> oh, we've got Dorothy Gladys Pierce, who died in 1985, age 72. And William Lawson Pierce, who died 1985, age 72. They both died the same year. That's weird, isn't it? I wonder if they died together. Anyway, that's all the new ones, which I might... I'll go and have a quick look at them. I'm going to get my feet soaked again, and I... Oh, I found a Barbary straight away. Now, isn't that amazing? Now, it's all it is. <coughs> it's behind a Caroline Couch row. She died in 1918, age 92, and her husband, William, died age 84 in 1906. And behind, it's like a... There's no stone there, but there's... um. It says, in leather memory of Sarah Barbary. So, the Barbaries are here. The Barbaries are here, that's the first one. And there's a grave there, but there's no stone anymore. It's just a little tiny thing, but it could be something to do with that one in front. I'm gonna look at the new, there is a path, but the sun is so bright. Yeah, there's older um, Vivians, or Vians, V-I-A-N. Here, yeah, there's somebody, Phyllis May Vian, who died 1983, age 74, and her husband, Thomas George Vian. So, they go back a long way from the 17th century. Well, at least the Vians got me to my last visiting place, you know, for doing graves. That's one good thing. found a Barbary more or less stripped away, even if it's only a, sl a little stone left, that's even more important to, to find. Well, I think I'm going to have to go and use that toilet in a minute, before we do much more. Yeah, that little stone is right behind the toilet area, really. It's not far beyond the toilet area. 
Right, I'm going to go to the toilet before I do any more. Yeah, it's quite a big graveyard. It even opens up into another field full of new graves, which I'm going to do now because they're all in a straight row and I can just walk straight along them. Oh, it's lovely out here, though. There's the clay pits over there. Yeah, so I found a barbary, so that's a good sign. We found one straight away. I'm worried about getting home with my van now. It's a quite a serious leak, but I still don't know if it's overflow. You can't tell from the dipstick. There's no red lights flashing. I don't know whether to put any more oil in or not. It might have enough in there. Oh, it's such a worry. Since that MOT has done this, I'm sure they've messed it up on purpose. I hate garages. They always sound like dentists. Anyway, I'm not walking along a straight row of stones. I'm only going to take a picture if there's any along here actually. God, I went to the toilet and it was a really old-fashioned toilet with a pool chain and it was really thousands of cobwebs in there. Anyway, after I'd been, I looked in the pan, there was a spider floating in the water so it must have been on the seat when I sat on it. I had a horrible spider on me yesterday as well, a great big bubbly one. Oh, it was horrible. Right, Peter James Pearson, 1977 to 2004, age 26, so he's about 30 years ago, he was born, so he wasn't very old when he died, about 26, 27, but because he was Pearson, I had, to, I had to do him, well it's a decent sized graveyard for me to do, just two, three miles from where I've been camping, and I had to, I've already wrecked the engine by going up that wrong way. I'm really worried about that, but I'll report on that as the day goes on. Right, I've got a big batch here to do. Home to Barbary. In loving memory of Thomas, beloved husband of Lillian Maud Barbary, died at Treloth, T R E L O W T H, December the 31st, 1940, aged 58, at rest. And and um, Linian, that was Thomas, that was Thomas Linian died. Um, aged 81 in 1986. So that's a Barbary grave and it's got some blueberry bushes on it. It's a low grave. Just turning over. Just turning over. Right, just found a Thomas Barbary. Um, like I was saying, um, a lot, even though they might have lived in other villages, this is uh, a quite a big graveyard, and they would have been brought here to be buried, um, like the Soham Cemetery. The people were brought from various villages. So that's good. That's two Barbaries. And of course, there's lots of unmarked graves. As usual, some you can't read anymore. Found another Barbary. It's a grey speckled marble surround with a standard low uh, stone head. And it's in loving memory of Gladys Kathleen Barbary, who passed away the 10th of October 1988-79. Dear wife of Ronald, loving mother of Desmond, dearest grand of Mandy and Katrina. There is a special kind of love that is meant for you alone. A special place within our hearts that only you can own. Also, Ronald, a loving husband, father and granddad, died the 12th of June, 1991, age, seven, age 87. And that's right at the end of the graveyard by the wall next to a field. I found another Barbary, the same square bit. Up near the entrance going into the new field, there's William Anthony Barbary. Died February the 7th, 1952, age, age 67. That's a William Anthony Barbary. Standard 
small size headstone with a granity looking um, surround and a little pot in the middle. No other mention of anyone else in there. In some places there's new scattered with old, especially the cremations. It does brighten it up a bit. Mix in that because you get the brightness of the people bringing the flowers. It makes it more cheerful, I think. This is definitely Barbary country. I found another one. In loving memory of our dear aunt, Mary Barbary. That's spelled B-A-R-B-A-R-Y, who died at Sticker, April 12th, 19... I think it's 41. It could be 1911. Um, age 60. At rest in the Lord. And that's got a big stone. As tall as... Tall, as tall as me when I stand next to it. This is in the older part of the cemetery. Down from the Barbaries I mentioned earlier, up in the top of the field there. Um, and there's a big fir tree. It's like a big fir tree and around some graves that have got a railings around it. And the person next door is um, Elizabeth Cundy Child, who died in 1904, age 74. And there's nobody next door until you get to the next one and then all the inscriptions have come off. The people within the um, enclosed railing memorial are the Andrew family. For example, Mary Andrew, wife of James Andrew, died in 1856, age 67, and he died, James, in 1889. So the Andrew family. Notice there's a lot of Philip families in, in here as well. Of course there is a John Jenkin who died in 1869, aged, could be 36 or 76, because, and he had a wife called Jane, because there were, there was a Peter Barbary who married a Jenkin or Jennings. Oh, I found a Barbary. I found a Barbary in memory of Arabella, the beloved wife of Thomas Barbary of this parish who died September the 12th, 1885, age 55, and also of Sarah Jane, their daughter, who died February the 2nd, 1885, age 20 years. They are not dead, but sleeping. And of Emily Ann, their daughter, who died age 26, June the 13th, 1887, that's Barbary with the E. It's like a Celtic cross on there, slaty looking, and it's in a very sunny position, and it'll take a very good picture. Oh God, for a minute I thought I'd lost the tape, because I put it on pause by accident when I put the tape recorder in my pocket. But, um, anyway, there wasn't any more Barbaries found after that. I finished the graveyard now, I've been all over. There's probably some things I was rambling on about, but um, not, I haven't lost the Barbaries that I put on there. I'm just going to take some more pictures now, and then go and have a cup of cocoa, and then I'm going and check the oil. I hope I get home, I'll try and phone everybody. All right, I'm just going inside the church now, before the dreaded journey. Have a look inside here. Might be something on the memorial plaques or something like that. I'll take a picture of um, some of the old Celtic stones as well, actually. We don't want the sun in our face. I don't know if I will. comment. 
church. Well looks after. Some lovely stained glass windows. Nice wooden ceiling. Seems to have been treated. Nice warm feeling about this church. Definitely. I'll just go down and I've just spotted the memorial for the war I think. 1914-1918, I just see if there's any names on there. Yeah, there's no Barbaries, but then they might be in their own villages. Yeah, there's a nice feeling in this place. Well, that's the end of my Cornwall trip. <sighs> I could do with some help getting home there, as you will. It's quarter past ten now. It's about time I phone somebody. Quarter past ten. Friday the 5th of October. The end of the Cornish field trip. Ending in um, the Mewen, St. Mewen Church. St. Austell. Where the biggest find of the Barbaries has been of the visible graves. Just the visible graves. Now I've got to check me oil. Have a cup of cocoa. And I'll phone Georgia before I set off and hopefully I'll get home. I mean it might just be the oil, it might just be. Thank you. 